Hello, welcome to my review of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, where you play as Cal Kestis, potentially trying to rebuild the Star Wars uh, Jedi Order. Uh, I'm going to start off right away and say it's a good game, by all means, if you're a fan of Metroidvania, if you're a fan of Star Wars, if you'd like a good single-player campaign, by all means, go out, pick it up, if you cannot afford it, <coughs> excuse me. You cannot afford it full price. By all means, wait until it goes on sale. Pick it up on sale. It's a well done game. Uh, there are plenty of options. In the options tree, controls, gameplay, you can tweak to your heart's content. And the overall game design is good. Um, there are a few caveats, but I'll get to that when we get there. Uh, I will say I have heard of people comparing it to Dark Souls. I am going to say, no, this is not a Dark Souls-like game, and here is why. In this game, settings, gameplay, there is a difficulty setting. You can change at any time. You want to make it heat easier? Go ahead. Play story mode. Nothing wrong with that. Your game, you play the way you're having fun. If you want to make it harder, go up to Jedi Grandmaster. You know, by all means, play that. Now, I will say I like that the way they balance it is not giving the bad guys more HP. It is the pairing timing, the incoming damage, and how aggressive they are. So as you can see, at the hardest difficulty level, you have a very low parry window, but a ton of incoming damage, and they are as aggressive as all heck. In story mode, huge parry timing window. But they don't do much damage, and they're not very... That's a good way to balance it. But see, that's the thing. In Dark Souls games, you don't get a choice. You don't get to choose a difficulty setting. A Dark Souls game is, here's the game, good luck. So to me, this is not a Dark Souls game. You get to choose your difficulty setting. It may take some elements from Dark Souls, which is fine, but you can find any of those elements in any given Metroidvania. For, for me, this to compare this to Dark Souls, it would be no difficulty setting. Here is the game. If you can make it through, by all means, good job. If you can't, tough luck. Deal with it, you schmuck. Alright? But in this one, you can choose the difficulty setting. So, you know what? I'm not going to compare this to Dark Souls. What I am going to compare it to is well-done open-world games in Metroidvania. As far as that goes... I would put this up there with any of them any day. It is a very well done op semi open world Metroidvania. Um, the graphics are incredible. They're beautiful. They're gorgeous. Things feel like Star Wars, if that makes sense. They look like Star Wars. They are the way they're supposed to be. The sound design is the same way. The character designs, like, there's a few characters every once in a while you go, like, meh. Maybe that could have been better, but overall, well done. Same thing with sound and level design. Great. Well done. The skill tree is perfect. Well, let me rephrase that. It's not perfect. It is well done. My complaint about the skill tree is not enough. You can get every skill by the end of the game. Alright? And yes, they add unique powers and ability, which is great. But... Again, I'm an old-school RPG player. I would have loved to have seen maybe one more level where it's like, all right, you've gotten all of these. Here's the basic stuff. Now, what about focusing on lightsabers at the cost of your force powers and overall survivability? Or focus on survivability, which would have been balanced, but you can take a hit, you know, that sort of thing. But again, that is me. Take it or leave it. You get plenty of abilities you find throughout the level. And it's cool that a lot of them are for BD-1, the droid companion you find along the way. It really makes him feel like a character. And he is. He's a great addition to the Star Wars universe, as are most of the characters. Right? There are plenty of uh, collectibles, both abilities and customization. Poncho, outfits, BD-1 skins, Manta skins. But they're just skins. Almost all the loot boxes in this game are just skins, which is fun, but, you know, I want to see something like, again, this is the RPG player in me, 
you know, increases, you know, my health. But maybe my defense is, you know, my parry timing window isn't it. Maybe it's decreased. You know, maybe it decreases damage, but increases my parry. You know, something like that. Um, oh, and I can't show it to you here, but I can show it to you in here. Uh, run in, uh, you can't run in the ship. There's collectibles for the lightsaber as well. And there is, again, lots of ways to customize the lightsabers. There's colors, different colors. Again, spoilers. Different colors for the crystal. Different emitters, which change how it looks. Uh... I forget which one I was on. I tend to like elemental nature, switches, sleeves, amenders again, different materials, and there's lots of all of those, and that's great. But again, I think it'd be, like, not the colors, but maybe you make the light save out of a material that increases your parry time window, but makes your attack a little less. Something like that. But again, this is the RPG part. Um, the mechanics overall, very well done. The combat feels good. The lightsaber combat, the use of force powers, the put, you get a you get a pull, you get a push, you get a super jump. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, BD gets great upgrades, that sort of thing. It's all very well designed. Uh, my complaint for the skill tree is that some skills were never used. That's all it comes down to. Let me show you some combat. So, you know, pull, done. Just like in the. Ooh, let me dodge that. Oh, wrong button. There we go. You can deflect blaster bolts. Ah, I gotta remember how to do that. Oh, come on. Oh. You know, it comes down to. Timing. This game is built around parries and dodges. I don't mind taking the hits. There we go. You get cool kill animations, which are great. The one thing about the combat I will say is they spend a good portion of this game drilling into you. Use parry. Use parry. Use parry. And parry is your best option. That sort of thing. Except... When you get to bosses. For a lot of bosses, your best option is not parry, it's dodge. I wish that had been, you know, some consistency there. Like, mix it up, that's fine. Teach me that you want to use parries and dodges. But especially for the last... One... Two... Three bosses in the game, parry is almost useless. At least for me, I found it. You want to use the dodge option. Alright. So, the, the, you know, decent combat. My only complaint about the combat is the controls to me, again, this could be because I suck at the game, felt floaty. It felt like the parry and dodge, uh, at least the parry, was based off the animation, not you actually hitting the button. The dodge felt like it was you hitting the button. The parry, not so much. And this caused issues where I would parry, I felt like I should parry because I hit that button... And the, either the animation was just too slow, excuse me, and I missed, hit the parry and take some damage, or it just wasn't timing. Now, it could be because of the difficulty setting I had it on, I admit that, but if you're going to make a game that relies on pinpoint parrying and dodging, they both need to be pinpoint. When I hit that button, that button should be a parry, not hit the button, oh, Sorry, you have actually should have anticipated what was coming in and hit it a second earlier. But if you do that and you're wrong, you take damage. So it comes down to, well, if I hit the dodge, I know I dodge. There is that. Uh, story overall, good, great. The pacing of the game was good. When you finish the game, you sit there and go, all right, that is how long it should have been. The actual story itself was paced a little odd because of the open world design. You get to pick where you go. So I ran into this issue of, like I said, the gameplay overall felt good, but 
characters like, and again, spoilers, Marin here, or Seer, or Grease. This is Seer, right here, a lady, and there's Grease. Where, like, because of the way the order I pick things to go in, it would be, all right, and then all of a sudden you have a deep rapport with this person. Wait, I just met them. Why do I have a deep rapport for this person? Or why is that conversation happening now when it feels like it should have happened earlier in the story? So there is that. But overall, good story. So overall, um, I will say this. Uh, story is a bit predictable, which is fine. They tell it well. I'm okay. And it ends abruptly. I won't tell you how or why, but all of a sudden it's just over. And you're like, really? That's it? Okay, well, I guess, let's keep going, you know, and then they bring you back to your open world exploration. So, that's pretty much the review of the game. Overall, really well done. Give it a shot. Again, you can't afford full price. By all means, wait for it to go on sale, pick it up on sale. But if you enjoy Star Wars, if you enjoy a good Metroidvania, or a semi-open world Metroidvania... Definitely give this game a shot. It is worth the money. Thank you very much for watching. As always, feel free to like, subscribe, or comment. Or come on over and check me out on Twitch or Mixer when I stream live every weekday at around 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope you enjoyed this quick little review, and I hope to enjoy any video you watch from me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.